Yo, internet. What's happening? Yeah, we got the F-150 in the shop. No, we're not really gonna touch it. What we're doing is more engine things. And by that, time to correct the mistake that I had by getting a Mustang cover and doing some machining because that's gonna be way easier than grinding and making dust everywhere. I'll throw a vacuum on there and uh, show you uh, again what has to be done, maybe in a more professional manner. Now, I know, I was just talking to Christian by from Power by the Hour, and he said they actually sell the Mustang covers pre-machined for a really good price. I didn't know that. So in order to make time versus money make sense, I can do this in a half hour. Probably not gonna happen, don't care. Haven't used my uh, drill mill in a while, my little Lobo. Um, so I'm excited to make some chips. Uh, I love machining. It's what I used to do, if you haven't uh, been keeping up on the channel, but uh, let's get after it. All right, first pad done, and I wasn't afraid to get close to flush with there. They want like an eighth inch over that. We're definitely under that, but that's good. And I can lop this one off, get basically flush to here, and then do the big dog. Oh. Yeah. I thought grinding on it was uh, like you take a brand new piece. I had no problem grinding on a used piece, but it's what it is. But like I said, now we're gonna have a nice new cover on this little on that little pig over there. Some lipstick for the old gal. So uh, let's keep at it. Oh, and then, like I said on the other video, we are gonna have to cut out a little, a little loop there. I think I got a ball mill that might work perfect for that. Well, the tip won't travel as far as I need to. So I'm just gonna go over and do the big boss right away and just refixture this to, uh, so that the machine can reach that. Talk about making some chips. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's uh, probably gonna go down a little further than that. And then uh, I'll have to refixture this thing. I actually had a piece of wood stuck, but the, it still wouldn't travel enough to get to that boss, I don't think. So I'm just gonna finish that up, get the last boss, and then see if I have a ball mill or not, or I'm just gonna make a square slot where uh, it's required. All right, got the piece refixtured and now I got enough travel I can get that bad boy down. All right, right before I changed to, I uh, actually had a, a ball mill. Lop that off real quick, got that one below the surface and now we're gonna make a little slot that goes right there. All right, I went a little more ham sandwich than uh, Power by the Hour's instructions said to, but that's okay. Cause after looking at the alternator and stuff and there's plenty of material there that ribbed, but uh, I think that'll, that'll work. Cause I don't want to grind this once it's back on the engine, have to do it twice, you know? So there we go. I'm going to clean this all up, make sure I get all the shavings out of there, install the front seal, and then start tearing that down to replace it with that cover. All right, now she's off the table, and yeah, it almost looks like I know what I'm doing. A little porosity in there. <laughs> so we got plenty of clearance for the belt and the alternator pulley, the alternator itself in there. 
and now I can put the this thing actually came with gaskets which was pretty sweet but as I'm machining I was like there's no dowel pins so I either have to transfer those can just drive them uh, I think they're actually in the block never mind so we'll be good there I believe and so I just got to put the seal in put the gaskets in and then tear that thing down Boom. and just like that the timing chain cover is swapped out and lo and behold everything clears everything's lined up Mustang timing cover with the power by other stuff. Oh, and I love the extra clearance I got in the alternator pulley. Oh, so much better. And yeah, I uh, am not gonna be using that power steering pump per se. Obviously it was just for test fit purposes. So there won't be any surprises once I get in the truck, just to know that it all lines up nice and clears the oil filter. But now, now I got the truck here. I've been like looking back and forth on things. This looks like it's probably gonna hit the rack. So worst case, I need to just get rid of the oil cooler and run a filter right onto there. I believe that'll be enough because um, that'll tuck the filter right underneath the belt. And then looking at the radiator, the lower radiator hose for the Coyote that connects to the radiator, you know, over here in space, has like one of these connections. So I might, if I get rid of the oil cooler, I'll probably just use a standard GT without the oil cooler lower hose from the Mustang to fit that up. And then I think the upper hose on that truck is bigger. So I might have to like just kind of persuade it on there um, on that radiator. Because I do plan on reusing that radiator, but using, oh, if you've seen our reel, this, uh, the Coyote fan assembly. So yeah. No, that's that, I think. So yeah, just kind of a short little update on uh, and showing what I had to do to get that timing cover um, fiasco to work and all like the power by other accessories work really well now. And so that's gonna be pretty sweet. I won't have to bleed any power steering fluid. I'll just drop the um, pump off and it'll go stay with the chassis when the body comes up and then it'll, you know, swap over onto that when it's ready. Three simple bolts, take a belt off, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I guess this video wasn't all that long probably with the machining, so let's uh, talk about what I um, have learned by just looking at the truck some more. It's been sitting in the street for a month and a half or however long ago I got it. And um, yeah, I think, uh, let's just go over there. It's a lot easier when the selfie camera is on this side. I don't know why I tend to not look at it because it's whatever. Um, so. Let's look at this thing. So, like I said, the radiator hose over there looks um, like a quarter inch diameter bigger than what coyotes use. And when I was looking at this thing, I was like, where's like the main, there's like no main wire plug going into the engine bay to like disconnect besides the um, PCM. So like, I feel like pulling this cap is gonna be like stupid simple. It's six mounts. And what I think I'm gonna do is pull the bed um, with the lift, then put it, uh, roll the truck out, probably drive it out, and then drop it on like some furniture dollies, get the bed out of there, so that I can put the truck in forward because my I don't think my garage door will close if the truck or put to truck in backwards like it is now. Uh, because I don't think the garage door will close with the truck where it needs to be so that the lift can pull the cab. So if I pull the bed, that'll allow me to put the truck in like it now, and then I can just roll the frame out forward and I won't need as much clearance or the cab would go as high. And second bonus, then I don't have to pull the tank because I'll, the bed will be off and I'll be able to do um, fuel pump things there. I'm not gonna go down in there, but speaking of fuel pump things, um, has nothing to do with this, but Looks like it has a plastic hat down there. So until I pull that, and I'm gonna see if I can add one of my uh, return simple fuel system, um, like I did with the Mustangs, and see if that works as well. It's obviously a returnless system. The fuel pump driver module is actually in the cab. Um, so we're gonna take a Coyote computer control that. It should be compatible with uh, the Coyote and just like the Mustangs are. I didn't get a chance to pressure wash this whole engine bay once uh, before I brought it in. And yeah, so as far as pulling the cab, so what's gonna have to come up with the cab and stay with the cab is the AC condenser and the AC compressor, which has a lot of uh, like rubber hose going to it. So that's gonna be able to like hang out wherever I want it to. And I'm gonna have to disconnect the master cylinder. That's gonna go down with the chassis. 
you know, some random stuff will obviously be pulled. Um, radiator will be fully out along with the fan. And then the only electrical stuff that I have to disconnect really is this AC, or not AC, geez, the ABS that's going into the chassis or the cab. Uh, everything else that's connected to that isn't going to be in the cab, like the headlights and the PCM body connector. And of course the engine harness and um, the battery cables that uh, feed the ground and starter. One other thing I'm going to have to um, kind of create is three valves decided to use this um, like bigger, different kind of quick disconnect. So in spirit of keeping it original, or not original, but like kind of OEM type. I'll, I'll make a, my own line with uh, the quick disconnect and reuse. The three valve does is the same way. They have a bracket that holds the fuel and evaporative lines and the lines just kind of go up towards the tranny and they stay down with the chassis. So with fuel stuff, uh, I just gotta make sure, hopefully that plastic hat has room that I can drill into and have that return fitting go back. And when I was underneath there, I uh, looked at the fuel pump and that or not the fuel the fuel filter and i don't know why i quoted that but the fuel filter looks you know just like the mustang one and i should be able to use the wix um filter just like the mustangs so yeah kind of giving you a little closer look at the truck i uh i did get some wheels for it today i got half of them i got one more wheel i'm trying to score another one i'll show you what i get later and uh, let's zoom over here got a little suspension goodies for it more on that later, probably after the swap. But yeah, it's gonna look like a cool little sport truck that uh, Ford should have made in the first place if the Coyote came out sooner, or maybe they should have just made a third generation Lightning that we all wanted. But I digress. So now we got our motor, and I'm gonna get after this wiring stuff and get a, a lay of the land, maybe at least, maybe make the, the, the big plug to the Coyote plug. Um, oh yeah, Joe Rogan. <laughs> um, harness and then get some lengths off of that and since the motor uh is essentially ready to be put in um but also needs to be attached to you know the transmission but i don't want to do that quite yet because there's still one thing i want to try before actually swapping it which involves keeping those separate i know i've been talking about that last few videos but just hang in there so yeah we're cruising um on this swap you know i uh I like to make good fast work on my projects. I don't like to be juicy fruiting around and uh, you know get stuff done because the faster I get this done myself, the faster you guys can uh, reap the benefits of getting a plug and play harness to do your own swap. So if you like this video, give it the old thumbs up and you know what else to do. Subscribe if you're new. You know, most of the people who are watching the videos haven't subscribed, so get after it. We'll see you next time.